Och till val på högra sidan. Exakt, men det är därför. Jag känner det så här. Mm. Det ser känns... kännas fel. Ja. Inbalans. Nu känner jag så här. Mycket bättre. Men långt ifrån hjärtat, eller vad? Det är inte så gött. Mm. Mitt hjärta är ju här och du sitter där. Ja, jag tror inte man har tänkt på det så. Nej. Mm. Nej, alltså, ingen fara. Nej. Ingen, ingen fara. fara. It's all good in Swedish. Mm -hmm. Ingen fara? Yes. Ingen fara. Ingefära. 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 Tack. I can only speak English and French, so. <laughs> Good to go. Should we look at you or in the camera? Camera, please. Oh. Let it, let it go organically. Yeah. Look at me as well too. Whatever you want. Okay. So, um, first of all, let's just talk a little bit about the tour. You guys did uh, an intense, in, uh, intensive North American tour already. This is your second time back to North America again after doing a hundred shows in last year. So, how does it feel being on the road all the time? And yeah, pretty much, eh? So, how does it feel being on the road and doing these tours with those huge North American fans? It feels great. Well, we were super excited. Yep. I mean, it's it's so amazing to be back here so soon after the last tour, and it's to, it's actually our third tour for the Massive Addictive record. Uh, and my for, for, for me, it's the fourth time in North, North America in just one year. So, and we, we we really like North America, both the United States and maybe Canada specifically. And uh, we just played a, a show yesterday here in Canada, yeah, uh, Montreal. Montreal, and it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And everybody always, every artist always say that when they're being interviewed, that how's the tour going? And then they go like, yeah, it's going great, blah blah. But no, it's not going great. It's going fucking awesome. Montreal yeah. was was super. Super yeah. cool, and Toronto is always really great as well. So we have high expectations. You better do it. Yeah. But we always agree on that we're in the right time zone here. Exactly. Yeah. Because when we're back in Sweden, we're we don't feel the same way, or in Europe even. Mm -hmm. It's fun, but we kind of feel like we belong here. So that's why we want to be here as much as possible. And thanks to the audience and the radio plays and the support we have here, we're able to come. Again, and three times in a year is a lot, but we can't wait to be back again. I kind of already miss US, but we have four more weeks. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the things. I mean, you guys have a huge uh, fan base at home as well, but here in North America and the US, especially, you guys are very well received. So, how do you feel about the fan base compared to in North America compared to Sweden, and how you guys do tours and sales and that kind of stuff? I mean, <clears throat> in, in terms of uh, you know commercial success and stuff like that, it's really really exploded. In, in the States and, in, uh, and also in Canada actually. So uh, I mean obviously that's cool for us not only because we are selling albums because it also means that we can tour and play a lot of shows and it enables us to continue doing what we love as well. So so naturally that's super cool. I mean America went from being maybe the seventh or eighth market in the world for us in terms of sales and streaming to be number one by a huge margin like at least a hundred percent margin or fifty percent actually from but zero to hero from zero to hero <laughs> uh, and the nexus i mean it was still we were still kind of surprised that you know in terms of you know sales and whatever we, without any kind of promotion it did did fairly well and then we released this massive addictive record and it just like exploded on the radio and it's no. been yeah i mean it's been used as a walk-on song for you know detroit red wings and stuff like that so naturally it's extremely exciting when it comes to the the shows themselves, it's I think the uh, the American audience is really enthusiastic. It's an enthusiastic, happy, energetic crowd. Yeah, and you've been featured in video games and stuff like that as well too. So yeah, yeah, cool. exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, one of the NHL games I remember. One of your songs was in one of the hockey what? games or something like that. What? What didn't anybody tell me that? Really? I'm trying to remember which one. I remember playing. I can't remember exactly what game it was playing, but I remember hearing you guys. I, like, I oh, think you might be right. I, I've heard a couple of people saying this, and I tried to do some research about it. Yeah, it was either Hunger or um, Light Years. I can't remember yeah. two songs. That's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, it was cool. I, I hope the next thing would be Guitar Hero, right? It should be. You're not a Guitar Hero Live. It should have been. Uh, they're still releasing uh, DLC content, yeah, of so course. there might be something, there might not. Yeah. We'll see. But as far as new metal bands out there, you guys have been one of the busiest. Like 2011, you guys pumped out your self-titled de um, self debut album. Mm -hmm. and then you came out with the Nexus right after the ne in 2013. They came out with Massive Addictive, and things have really blown up for you guys. If you were just saying since the Massive Addictive um, album came out in 2014, you guys have hundreds of shows across home in North America. So what's going to be next when you guys get home and the festivals are done in Sweden in June? Are you guys going to hit studio again for a fourth studio album, or what's going to go on? That's correct. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. 
Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> at, 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 at this point, we're still, you know, we just started to, to you know, doing concepts and we're writing music and stuff like that. But uh, um, we're definitely looking at an album recording next year. So we, when we come back after this tour, it's going to be the, the first thing that we're going to do is you know sit down and ride as much as possible. So we're going to try not to be too super busy, in, you know, in terms of touring and playing live shows in the early like first uh, first half of next year. And I mean that's usually what we always say, but I mean when I look at the schedule, I can see that it's starting to fill up a little bit. Yeah. But uh, that's also the way we like it because if you're only sitting, you know, at home or in the studio writing music, then you kind of forget what it's about. That's what I really like with you know combining touring and, and composing music is that you, you you see all the fans you get that kind of energy and you can put that into the music so yeah and it's great too because you guys just put out the B sides album so mm -hmm. give the fans a little bit of stuff while you guys are on tour so they have exactly. something to hold them off for a bit and uh, you guys have put out three music videos a piece pretty much for every album that you guys have put out do you guys plan on putting out a uh, music video for one of the new singles that are on the new album like uh, Splinter of My Soul or Breaking uh, Point I don't think oh. so. I mean, it would be. I cool. mean, Breaking Point would I will be never, a very I, interesting video. That would me. be fun. Yeah, we, we haven't considered it. We haven't talk, talked Thanks about. Thanks for the it. idea. See, this, yeah. this is what we get ideas from. Yeah. Meeting you people like you. <laughs> so should we do that? Yeah. Okay. If not, thank you. We can just make a homemade <laughs> video. For yeah. That. Me and all of us. <laughs> or maybe it's part of your live show. Take some live footage and put it together and something. That could be. That could be. Yeah. Yeah. We can probably put together all the photos we take on the tour on this tour, and then we can make a. Just like pictures. Yeah, <laughs> Still and I mean, pictures. you guys have evolved so much from album to album. Um, the first debut album was very solid because you guys came out with a very definitive sound. Mm -hmm. um, switching singers and everything like that, do you feel like in 2013 when Henry came on that that's really evolved the sound as well too? Mm -hmm. Or do you feel like it was just um, that as she goes and he really filled the void? No, no, I think that we actually got very inspired by him. Yeah. And because he was uh, a great growler, but besides that, He's also very open-minded, and he, he got, I think he probably planted the idea to, to make the girls uh, a little bit rap-inspired. Um, and some other parts yeah, that I mean, we he, didn't he has, think we have before had been. Yeah, he has, he has a very groovy style, and when we sat down to write the growl parts, we were realizing that there was a lot more than we could could do with him. I mean, Andy was great growler, but definitely more old school and you know classical growler in that sense. Screamer, I think you say in America, right? Yeah, more or less yeah, than growl. Yeah, 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 whatever. Sure. Um, and so yeah. But it, we have a song like uh, like Danger Zone. Or That's the one I thought about. Mass yeah. Selective, yeah. It's it's like which is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lyrics. Yeah, it's the rub original. Dab, rub yeah. dab, boom. <laughs> right off the studio version. Right there. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> the team of vocals. Yeah. yeah but I, I think that as, as soon as you switch a member, there's always going to be something with the dynamics of the group that is going to change a bit, and hopefully for the better. Yeah. Uh, and I think you know it, it helped us to to you know evolve the sound of, of the band coming into the third record. We we definitely wanted to you know the step between the second and the third album to be you know more noticeable. And a greater step than between the first and the second, and I think Henrik helped us to do that. Yeah, and I feel like your yeah. voices have a great contrast together as well too. And stuff like, do you find that the writing is still very organic? Do you guys have trouble when you're writing the lyrics and the sounds? Or? Uh, never. No, this is this is something which is like I, both me and Elise have worked with a million different people in terms of songwriting, mm -hmm. and it's in, in this configuration there is never any writer's block or composer's block. Uh, it's never that we sit down and you know go like, yeah, what about this? No, it doesn't even really work. What about this? No, it doesn't even work either. It's usually the, the other way around. It's like there's too many ideas. There's too much chaos oh. right now. Like we have to you know try to make some sense out of this because there's like it's been one hour and we have 12 great songs already. <laughs> so, so usually there's an immense amount of creativity. Yeah, that's, that's so you fun. Know, f flowing. And so. he plays a keyboard. I mean, you should probably actually see us. We should film action. this process. Yeah, we sometime. should. Uh, it looks see, like a. We're like, watch. and then you play it, and I was like, yeah. It's like you said, and I, and I was like, face it. I told you I'm on fire. And I was like, maybe it's that too much. And he's like, no, fuck no, yo, let's do this. And I was like, okay, there's a the chord, more, and then more. like more. Extra, extra <laughs> and then more. the song is done. Done. So it's a very organic process. Yeah. It's a very organic process. 
and the whole and concept behind the music is more is more. Contrary to popular <laughs> be belief, it, people say less is more. And I quote Ingrid Malmsteen, how can that be? That doesn't make any sense. How can less be more? More is more, kids. Yeah. No, but I think that that's the most... Uh, uh, best way to write songs is when it comes from the inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not from like... I don't know. Overthinking things. Yeah, or from the outside. <laughs> no, well, I wonder that often. Like, you have so much energy and stage presence when you're on stage. And I just wonder, uh, like, after doing a hundred or so fucking shows, how do you keep it up all the time? Like, how do you keep your energy level up? Like, drugs. No. Nope. Yeah, pretty much. Ca <laughs> caffeine. It's at a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we don't support drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> salute. Though. No, I think that we have a drug which is called adrenaline. Yeah. Which is the best drug ever. And that comes from all the awesome things that we experience. And actually, I can be super tired before a show. But as soon as I step on stage and I see the audience, I kind of... Uh, it's very hard to be tired and like not being energized by that. Yeah, the and also the so music is shows. very addictive. Ooh, that's good. It's massively addictive. Um, <laughs> it could also be, I mean, sometimes you can also think that maybe we have some kind of over-energetic syndrome, whatever that's called, excitement disorder. <laughs> excitement <laughs> disorder. <laughs> I love that. It's a good property to have to be a stage performer, if you ask me. Oh. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's one of those things that makes you maybe not fit so great for all the other, uh, you know, professions <laughs> in the world. but. Because you're sitting well, by a desk, yeah, desk and you just want to do like 25 million other things at the yeah. same time. For a musician, that is perfect. After 120 shows, then you still have the energy. Okay, let's. Well, what should we do now? Should we take a break for three weeks? No, let's go play some more shows. Yeah. Just like yeah. you are doing in December. Yeah, I'm going straight on another tour, straight after this tour. Oh wow! It's a Christmas, 